industry developer at Google, and he has previous work experience in Amazon, Flipkart, and other big, big tech companies that we all would love to be placed in one day. He is an incredible software design, uh, incredible software developer. He's incredibly passionate about software design and developmental techniques. So today he will be sharing with us his experience about uh, data structures, algorithms, and the best practices to actually go ahead and prosper in this field from zero to hero level. So I would like to, I would like everyone to please give uh, our guest speaker, Mr. Garojin, a very, very warm welcome. Uh, good evening, sir. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, what's your name? Uh, I, I'm Nikhil, sir, from the Student Facebook Council. Hi, Nikhil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for inviting me and for such a warm welcome. Uh, yeah. Um, how should I go about this event? Should I start well, with questions or what? Well, we would love to uh, hear a little bit about uh, your journey first and uh, any tips uh, that you would love to share with the students. We'd love to hear from you. Then we can open the floor for a Q&A session. I'm sure we have, uh, you know, almost 110 students with us today on Zoom and plenty of other participants on YouTube as well. I'd, I'm sure they'd love to learn a lot about your experience and, you know, uh, how to get started in this very complex yet uh, interesting world of data structures and algorithms. Sure, sure. Um, so I'll talk briefly about myself. I did my undergrad from NSIT, Netaji Subhash Institute of Technology in Delhi. So it's NSUT now. Um, I did my internship in Samsung R&D Bangalore in the camera department. I worked there for two years in embedded domain. So I was working on the camera itself. Um, it was low level work, low level as in it was kernel. Uh, the languages we used was C, C++. So I got a lot of insight into the low level implementation of kernel uh, and OS. After that, I worked one year with Amazon in the backend and uh, another year with Flipkart again in the backend. So in Amazon, I was with pantry team and uh, in Flipkart, I was with retail team. So we were working on processing the orders that the customers placed and the end to end pipeline was taken care by our team. Um, I joined Google in December, so I'm working in AlloyDB team. So AlloyDB is a new database that went to GA. So GA is general availability. It was made publicly available to the public in January. Um, I'm working in the backend domain in this uh, AlloyDB right now. So I'm working on Terraform support and storage quota. So any database that we use, it has a storage quota. So if, if you are going to use AWS or GCP, you have a specific quota for each of the resources that you use. The API limit, uh, for example, or the number of CPUs that you have. Similarly, databases has their storage quota. And another is Terraform. Terraform is infrastructure as code. So you can provision resources by, just by writing some lines of code rather than going in uh, onto the console or using the CLI uh, or hitting the APIs. So that's what I'm working on right now. <clears throat> yeah, so it has been five years now. Uh, I have five years of experience now in three years in backend, two years in embedded. Um, yeah, so if, if we look at data structures and algorithms, I think um, if I start from my journey way back in school, uh, in school in 11, 12, I had C, C++, but I didn't pay any attention to it. So it was, um, I was focused on IIT where you guys are sitting. Actually, I didn't go to IIT. You see, you, you are blessed and you, you worked hard to be where you are. Uh, so even I was nervous. I was like, how, how would I go to? Uh, these IIT Madras students and teach them about DSA where I could not be myself. Yeah, so jokes apart. Um, yeah, so I didn't pay attention to it in 11, 12th. I, um, I, I just joined IIT because my teachers recommended I, I had a passion for physics actually. I didn't go for that. Uh, I just wanted to test the waters like how, how they are. Uh, I got interested after I think uh, a month or two in, in, um, in C, I was working on C++, so I was I got interested in solving problems. So um, I think I started with Spodge in after first year. After my first year ended, uh, that is what we did. So there was this universe problem. I don't I don't even remember. It's it's printing 42 or something uh, after a certain iterations. Yeah. So if if I go if I tell you about my journey, uh, first of all, I'm not very good at DSA. I am like, um, 
i'm not an icpc regionalist or finalist so i would not be able to uh, tell you about how to crack those things um, but i might be able to tell you about how companies approach these interviews because i think it's very different from what icpc requires um, the companies approach these uh, so to give you a brief overview companies generally approach these interviews in a holistic manner um, they are not looking uh leaving some of the companies i would say i think direct i used to take some hard questions coordination some of the companies used to have very uh, relatively difficult questions on dp uh, dp on graphs dp on trees 3d 4d dp so they used to be there but i don't know if they are still there or not but most of the companies are not looking for those skills they are looking whether you are a holistic developer whether um you can understand the problem statement um correctly are you making the right assumptions are you able to state the assumptions that you make um the code that you write is that clean is that modular are you writing the test cases uh are you thinking out loud are you conveying whatever you you are thinking um to the interviewer those are the skills that um uh, companies look for and the reason for the same is for, for this is because when you work in a company it's not even if you are an ic ic is individual contributor so there are generally two tracks within a company one is the managerial track and the other is the ic one individual contributor even if you are an ic you are not actually an ic you are collaborating with a lot of stakeholders uh, so even in let's say i'm working on terraform it is actually just an ic job i just need to write code i need to get it done but i think i have touch points with at least 20 to 25 people with different teams and different domains uh so you need to be very well versed in how you communicate with other person those are the skills that companies are looking apart from your technical the technical is the base but on top of that you need to be a good communicator as well um to collaborate in order to effectively uh, collaborate so to go back to the journey i would say i i think i picked up c c++ via this book bala guru swami e bala guru swami i guess um then i did some spoj code chef i did some code chef on um the long challenges that they had back in time i don't know if they still have that um they had the lunch time as well at that time i by third year i think i picked up code forces i i really liked code forces uh, especially the ui i would say and the the problem statements were very nice um and another thing about code forces was a lot of good tutorials were present over there um which i think code chef lacked at the time um spoj lacked all of it spoj was like not not a very good ui you could not even look at what test case actual test case your code fails there were no tutorials the you could not even actually see the solution of the other person if i remember correctly so in code forces you can view that so it had a lot of limitations uh, i moved on to code forces at that time i guess um the myth i think that we had at that time was that you had to do that corman book clrs corman i don't even remember the name it's a clrs clrs book if you search it you will find it it's it's like this thick book i can't see my own screen let me see if i'm visible properly show self view because we use google meets and google so i don't yeah this this yeah this looks better yeah so this is this this thick book um i did some parts from it it was dp i think i did from it uh dsu dsu is disjoint set unions i did some um some sorting algorithms from it some like it is a fabulous book it is um it is just awesome like you would uh the best thing that i learned from that book was invariance it's in chapter 3 or 4 i don't remember now like the algorithms whatever you write are based on the invariance um uh, invariant is something let's call it a proposition that that is maintained throughout your looping so that that's what an invariant is uh, i'm just citing what i did okay um after that what did i do lead code lead code i started very late i think in third year i started lead code um after that i did some ml because it was a fad to do ml 
which is becoming even more of a fad now. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it. I think um, I got an internship. I joined. I I was uh, uh, I sat for the interviews for Adobe and uh, my PPO came at the same time. So I had to choose uh, whether to take the PPO or sit. So it was the safe choice to get to take the PPO at that time. Uh, yeah, I think after that there was this book Elements of Programming Interviews, which I did here and there whenever I wanted to ship. So. In five years, I have switched four times, three times. Yeah, companies are four, so switching is three. Uh, yeah, that helped, I think. And uh, in that journey, I think getting the interview was the difficult part rather than clearing the interview, I would say. Because if you apply to companies, let's say you are applying to 10 companies, even if you have a stellar record, if, if, even if you are from a reputed college, uh, let's say bits or triple IT Hyderabad or IIT. Um, chances are you'll get you'll hear back from the recruiter maybe 10% of the time. Other 90% of the time they might have went uh, gone away with the other uh, candidate. The position is no longer there or your skills do not match. A lot of times you won't hear back from the recruiters even if the times are good. Uh, clearing the interviews if you have prepared well is much easier than getting the call from the interviewer, getting the call for the interviews. Okay. Yeah. So that was my journey. I would say, um, I, I can tell you about my Google interviews, maybe a bit, uh, how long is this? Um, uh, Michael, how well, long is we this? have time until, uh, 7 PM. So, so sure. um, you, we can uh, share a whole bunch of things in that time. So, uh, if you could talk us through about what kind of preparation you did for these interviews, because you have a lot of experience uh, from so many different varieties of, uh, companies, right? So if you could tell us, uh, what kind of preparation strategies you used, what kind of questions were especially mm -hmm. asked in these Interviews. Uh, what gave you the card? We can open the floor for some questions. Um, sure. I'm sorry. Am I on? Am I yeah, on? Yeah, I got your question. I got your question. Yeah. Let okay. me look at the chat once. Uh, how is lead code? Lead code is. I, I'm just going through the chat once. Lead code sure, is good. Sure, definitely, sir. Coach yes. still holds contest. That's good. CLR is yeah. Corman, yes, this is the book, right? Um, uh, that book is not for all that. That's very true. <laughs> that's a bit challenging. Uh, sorry. please tell other than DSA, what do they ask in the interviews? Okay. I'll, I'll cover this first. Um, and I'll cover the DSA afterwards. Anuj. Um, so it depends on the companies. Like previously they didn't use to ask machine coding round. Machine coding is low level design. So you. Uh, let me get it this way. There is a high level design that you do high level design of uh, any system. Let's say Twitter is a cliche example that is taken. So if you have to do a high level design of Twitter, you have to design the services like what services there will be for doing the CRUD. CRUD is create, read, update, delete. So there is this concept of a resource in the rest world. Rest is um, the rest APIs, the HTTP APIs that we are using. So what uh, there will be in there will be a service for creating or reading updating deleting them how those services interact what kind of a database do you need do you need uh, a message message queue so these are all the things which are very high level in nature that comes under the high level um, hll high level what is it called high level design hld hld yeah and the other is LLD. LLD is basically your class design. So once you have that design, high level design, you, you dig deeper and look at the lower level um, attributes of, of, of the solution. So what classes do you have? What are the class members? Uh, what are their visibility? Is it a protect, protected member? Is it a private member? Uh, what kind of data structures you are using? So that comes under your low level design and what people generally look for LLD is the extensibility, whether the code that you're writing is extensible. If, if there is a change in the requirement that happens often in software, uh, that your customer is asking for X today and they want, let's say X one tomorrow, an additional, 
uh, thing within X. Will your code be able to accommodate those changes? That's what um, companies look for in LLD. Um, Flipkart had machine coding. I think they have for SDE one as well. I gave the interviews for SDE two, but they have for SDE one as well. Uber has it. Uh, I'm not sure of other companies which have them, but companies are, I think, moving towards LLD as well. Uh, and the reason is I what I think is uh, it gives them a better a uh, better idea of your development skills as a developer because dsa does not give you a good uh, dsa is not a good indicator of your um, what should i say how should i put it of your ability to write modular and extensible code as simple as that dsa does not test that um, the people who let's say write code for icpc we use variable naming as ijk or you know, like um, it does not make the code does not make sense. It, that code never goes into the production in any company's interview. So, like I was writing the code uh, in the morning. The name of one of the variable was primary producer cluster name, maybe or like it was a very large, very long name. Uh, so companies are looking for HLD. HLD, I wouldn't say for SD one companies would be, but they might be. Uh, they might be looking for HLD, not very in depth, but but a cursory knowledge of HLD, I would say. Similarly, LLD, they, they wouldn't ask you very hard questions um, for an SD one because I, I what batch is this? Is is it a second year or third year, Nikhil, or is it a mix? Well, it's a mix, uh, sir. We have uh, from various uh, levels right now. Okay, so first year, second, third, fourth, till fourth year. Yes, yes, yes. Till fourth year, we have a mix of all the students. I won't say the fourth years are here right now, but uh, okay. mostly second and third year students. Yes. Second and third year. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody would be applying for an SD one rule. Uh, you can, I think, read through. I'll send all the links to Nikhil and Sayam. Um, uh, there is this GitHub repo. Uh, let me paste the link as well right now. Um. It's a very famous one, system design. If you just do a system design GitHub, you'll get the first link. Yeah, this one. Let me share this. So this is very, like this is more than enough. If you even go through it, uh, if you just glimpse through it, all the topics, what is what does it mean? And work through some of the examples, it is more than enough. Similarly, I'll share for LLD as well. So that, that's good to go. Uh, what others do they ask? DSA, LLD, HLD. They ask for the experience because for me, I switched after like a two year experience. So they asked what projects you worked on, how you handled conflicts. If you had conflicts, uh, you would you guys would not be asked those questions. But for example, Google has this Googliness interview. Uh, so they ask uh, for L3, they ask hypothetical questions rather than uh, the case study, what, what has been done. They ask you if so and so happens, what would you do? Uh, why I gave interviews for L4. Uh, they asked me, what, did, did this happen and what did you do? So those are like two different kinds of questions. One is a hypothetical one. One is an actually scenario based what you have faced in your life or not. So answering hypothetical is very easy. You can be the nicest guy on the planet. Like I'll do this and this and this. But when it comes to your past, it's very difficult to lie. First of all, you should not lie. Even if you try to, they'll dig deeper and deeper and uh, the story will not match. Uh, the, the, yeah, the parts would not come together and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll detect that. Uh, that's what they ask in hiring manager rounds. So companies after all these rounds, so technical rounds may, you would have a DSA, you would have LLDs might be or HLDs. Um, you have these online assessments as well in some of the companies for language based questions. Um, HFTs highly um, like uh, they rely on these into these types of questions heavily uh, because they might need that in that kind of skills. Uh, for example, tower research or uh, Black Rock. So all the HFTs would be asking you questions on let's say C, C++, networking, operating system, and they go very deep in those areas. Okay. 
uh, what else do they ask? So th this is the technical part. Then you have uh, these scenario based questions. And then there is hiring manager. So HM is generally the person who asks these questions. Um, depends on the companies. Um, some company in some companies, the hiring manager for the specific specific post in which team you'll be going, they'll ask these questions. Otherwise, in most of the companies, I think most big tech companies, it's it's a generic round. So any manager can take that round, irrespective of which team you go to. Yeah, that's it. I think that those are the rounds that you have. And yeah, let me again go to this. Okay, I'll tell you about how to learn from scratch. Where to start DP? I'll tell that. Uh, this is becoming a lot of questions. Let me go through the DSA journey. I would say how one should go about it. Then I'll go through these questions. Or let me let me write them down and I'll address them. Uh, so one is DP. One is from scratch. Five star coder on hacker rank. I am in first year doing DSA. What would you suggest? Okay, how to make resume? Resume I'll cover. Resume is very important, man. This is a good question that you asked. What to put in the resume for internship to increase? How to prepare for system? System design, I have shared a link uh, for HLD. LLD, I'll share the links with Sayam. Uh, so he'll forward that to you. Um, Striver is best. Have you? I think Striver is in Google now. I don't. I don't follow YouTubers that much, but I heard about this person. For sir, two major ML guide also. Man, I'm not very well versed in ML. Sorry, but I think there are a lot of resources out there on ML, so you can start and like in in general. I would say in general, uh, in any field you go, whether it be software engineering or let's say bodybuilding or whatever. Uh, once you start doing something now, uh, so so I I like this thing from uh, one of the person I admire really highly. I don't know whether you know him, and people generally have very strong opinions about him. So there is this person called Jordan B. Peterson. He is a Canadian psychologist. So he he, he cites one phrase from Bible. Uh, so that the uh, the phrase is ask and you shall receive, knock. As if you want to enter and and the door will open. Uh, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and everyone that knocketh, uh, the door will be open. So the point is, once you start making some progress now, uh, and you have your eyes on what what is the best way forward, even if you do not have a mentor, you will reach to a very good state in life in general in any endeavor that you take up. Uh, so I'm just I'm just well, it's, it's it's off the topic, but I think that is a good way to go about life in general. Um, for example, you can look up YouTube and people say start doing the Kaggle Titanic in Titanic uh, contest, and you can start building up your uh, skills one after the other. So for ML, I think there is one good book. It's uh, I like that. It is. Uh, I'll send you. I forgot the name. Fast AI. Fast AI. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yep. Let me share this link. Oh, this is I like this. So th this this is not math uh, heavy. It's it's it gives a good good introduction into ML. It gives you a glimpse of what all. Uh, what all data sets are there, what all models are there, and using the models instead of getting lost in the maths. There, okay, a lot of questions are coming. Let me, I think questions are flooding. So rather than go, I'm going, I'll, I'll go through those afterwards. So let me start with DSA. I had some questions that the team gave me. So what is DSA? I think. Uh, let me give a brief, very brief introduction. So DSA is data structures, algorithms um, in computer science, everything that you would do, everything I would say, like front end engineering, back end, machine learning, um, security, anything and, and everything that you can think of in computer science is based on data structures and algorithms, nothing else. 
data structures is any structure like it's a container for storing your data okay so it can be an array it can be a linked list it can be a stack queue if you are going for machine learning a cnn you are storing it in an array let's say 2d array or 3d array everything is a data structure and to manipulate that data you need certain algorithms the the way of doing something is an algorithm like i think that word comes from al khwarizmi or we were taught something like that right al khwarizmi gave the algorithm is the way of doing something so algorithm and data structures that, that's what it is for our purpose we are looking at very specific um data structures and very specific algorithms on top of that um so for our purpose the the data structures would be restricted for what companies are looking for our stacks queues linked list vectors hash maps um segment trees companies ask that and believe me google asked me segment tree i was not prepared but um uh, i had done it twice or thrice so i came up with it uh, at the moment and i i don't know how i could do that at that time but yeah they they do ask uh, even if your recruiter says they won't uh, be prepared for it uh and i think that made a lot of difference in how i could negotiate afterwards uh having a good interview score is very uh is very crucial while you are negotiating um uh, yeah segment trees dp um so segment trees are data structure D dps won't be a data structure segment segment trees based on uh yeah segment trees uh what else so these are the data structures that are uh, mostly asked in companies for algorithms it's the general sorting insertion sort bubble sort counting sort um heaps heap sort um what else is there graphs me you have dfs bfs uh warshall algorithm floyd warshall um bellman ford you have msts uh, minimum spanning trees um uh, in dp you have 1d 2d companies generally do not go for 3d or above uh, is what i have seen dps a lot of companies refrain from asking dp even 1d but uh, be prepared for it i would say um, and it's fun i would say it, it's fun like if you start doing these things it will become kind of a game for you so you won't uh, what should i say resent it doing doing these things dp what else is there dsu is important data uh, disjoint sets disjoint union and sets these um then you have for string algorithms there is this kmp uh, noth morris pratt algorithm you can go through it once um i haven't once or twice i think i have seen that question come up but uh, it doesn't but if it comes up and you do not know kmp you are not going to solve it because if if a person is going to solve it then um that algorithm would not have it the name kmp because it took three people to come up with that algorithm i think yeah um i'll give you i'll give you some pointers like these are that um algorithms that are generally as data structures and algorithms let me move on to the next question i think it's 634 we have to wrap up as well which language is the most suitable one um whatever feels comfortable to you um uh, i would say python java cpp these three are i think you you, you all might know are the preferred ones because a lot of companies have built their architecture on top of these already and uh, uh, so it works both the ways companies build companies use the languages try to use the languages which are there in the market which market is using and market is built by the company so it's a symbiotic relationship i would say like not symbiotic it's not the right word but uh, both have an effect on each other because let's say if market is using java and google starts using python uh problem number 1 would be any it becomes harder for google to hire engineers who are well versed in python if google is using python and the market is using java at whole uh, at large and the second thing is if if a developer is coming to google learning python and if if they leave the company it becomes harder for them to find the opportunities outside and whatever they learned in the company becomes um a lot of it is wasted i wouldn't say a lot but substantial amount of that language specific is wasted not not the design uh, learning as a whole so that that's the reason companies um 
generally use languages which are popular in the market so java python c++ are good to go uh, yeah you can pick any one i would say best practices to follow when learning dsa um best practice would be try to solve a problem so pick a problem try to solve it uh, try to solve it hard um think of different use cases how how you can so i'll i'll also share one guide that i have so there is this book by g polia g polia was a mathematician he had a book on mathematics how to solve it in that it's about mathematics actually but he gives a two pager uh, method of solving any mathematical problem so you can use that in coding as well so what are the unknowns what is given to me uh, can i derive the unknowns from the knowns is whatever i need is is this a sufficient condition is this a necessary condition and so on that that's a good guide and another guide is from uh, this book cracking the coding interviews by mcdowell i i remember i forgot the name of the author so she also gives a good two pager summary of how to approach problems uh in brief the problem just try to understand the problem uh, first of all pick a problem that is not uh, above your belt like, don't go too high don't start solving the hard problems uh lead code high problems or code forces d e f start from the basics start from code forces a division 3 um division 3 then then do b c d slowly uh rise above and while solving a problem pay very specific attention to the problem like uh what information can you get what information can you get out of the of the problem statement itself what assumptions can you make uh and be very specific about the assumptions that you make um uh, because one problem that comes up often in interviews is people make assumptions they don't state it because they do not even recognize themselves that they are making that assumption so that is very important to state your assumptions and be very clear uh about it uh yeah after that try harder matlab try hard don't don't give up on the problem i would say depends on the problem uh but try to give at least 3 to 4 hours to a problem to every problem i would say at least that much time a problem needs when you are starting off okay uh after that um maybe go to some of the links um if you think it is a string problem let's say and it needs some algorithm that you don't know try searching it rather than going jumping directly to the solution um if you are still not able to understand it maybe look at the tutorials but just parts of the tutorial like read one or two line and think are you able to understand some missing piece of information are you able to get that and um culminate that in your solution in your whatever you had um uh, and then maybe if you are not able to then read another line and read another so go in that flow um do i would say don't look at the code first just look at the text whatever is written in the text like let's say they are saying sort sorted so rather than looking at the code of sorting it let's say c++ and there is an stl standard template library rather than looking at the code of how they are doing it um look at the text and then try to translate that text into your into the code in let's say you are using python so uh look up google for how to sort an array and use that uh yeah that that's the way i would say and let's say if you are able to solve the problem then think of the test cases um on which it might fail think of the edge cases that it has uh and do a dry run dry running is very important um you should be very after writing the code you should be very good at dry running your solution through some of the smaller test cases and uh, choose the test cases uh, i would say in a way that you are able to cover a lot of different uh, edge edge cases yeah what else is there yeah that's it i would say that's it about the problem solving uh what dss skills big techs are looking for i think i have given a good um answer for it comprehensive like they are looking for a comprehensive engineer like you are an end to end engineer you are you own the problem that that's what they are looking for you are not shoddy your work is not shoddy 
like it's not you do not have just a cursory knowledge of the problem you actually deep dive into the problem and solve every aspect of it one by one that's what they're looking for um uh, they're looking for clarity of thought uh, generally companies are looking for that uh, whether you know what you don't know is also important to them let's say uh for, for example i cited that the assumptions that you make are important uh do you know the assumptions that you have made uh that's important to them yeah the most important dsa topics to be job ready i don't think there are any uh, such topics as such everything is important here matlab in dsa you have linked list queues tags so those are the basic ones then you have vectors how you use them um hash maps in hash maps you might have an ordered set set sets for example you have an ordered set an ordered set in hash maps as well you have an ordered map an ordered map um yeah these topics are important um i i oh, where from where can you get a good understanding i think this book elements of programming interviews does a good job of um giving all the important topics in in one book and ctci also does a good job a fairly a good job but ctci i would say is a bit easier than what companies generally ask companies do not ask high end questions as well i would say like this is a myth that a lot of people have that companies ask very tough questions it's not true at all uh, i i i'll give you an example i appeared for the facebook london interviews last to last year i think um they had a 45 min- minute interview my interview got over in 10 minutes but i'm not uh, bragging here i'm saying and the same same experience is with my uh, current manager who used to work in facebook uh, prior to google she also did the same thing she said my interview was for 45 minutes my interview got over in 25 minutes that's it the questions facebook i think specifically facebook asks for ds is very easy um but in general the companies do not ask very hard questions what the problem people face is completing the problem within time um thinking about the solution conveying the solution to the interviewer uh, writing the code writing the edge cases doing the dry running it takes a lot of time if you start doing that process now there is this website i'll type that pramp.com so you can uh, okay let me do this okay this got to direct message okay i am not have i been directly messaging only to anuj till now i don't know uh, yes I... no messages are visible in the public chat oh i'm really sorry <laughs> i am not <laughs> i don't use zoom actually i haven't i once or twice i might have used it so this is the website pram.com so you can do a, a mock interviews with so it it pairs you with other people in real time um you will see it for yourself it, it's not e- as easy as it seems writing the code on lead code within 20 minutes is way easier than an interview because you have to explain your solution to another human being rather than a computer um, and it's it's difficult believe me it's not easy uh, you'll find the gaps in your own communication um, and you need to work on that and that will make all the difference i would say how much dsa should a student know to get a good job again a very subjective question but i think if you are able to solve a gen- general guideline i am it's a very general and a vague guideline if you are able to solve lead code hard questions within 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes i would say or maybe 30 max that's a good indicator that you are able to solve the problems timely uh now will it translate into good interview score not necessarily uh, it it needs your te- good technical skills are you able to convey it? the solution that you had is it uh, end to end tested so a lot of things uh, go into that uh, so it's it's ju- just that you are able to solve the problem does not mean your interview has gone good uh, those are two separate things i would say yeah I'll, i'll i think we have only 15 minutes left so i'll cover very quickly dp for dp there was this good uh, this top coder had a very good tutorial i remember yeah so just search okay this changes to uh, let me do it uh, top coder um, just search you will find it top coder dp tutorial top coder is a very good website i would say i really loved their uh, 
what they call it srm i think i don't remember the name but it's good it's very good um you can look at the dp tutorials for top coder they have also for graph graphs is also good there graphs and others it has a, lo uh, a lot of them you can start from there and uh, i know dp is not a very intuitive thing it takes time to build um intuition for dp uh, but don't spend too much time on it companies ask it but not a lot of those not a lot of companies ask and even if they ask they do not ask very hard dp so once you have built a certain level of comfort in dp i think start spending time on other things rather than focusing too much on dp because i what happens is people start focusing too much on the things that are hard and they're not comfortable doing uh we need to take into account whether that thing is actually crucial to the company for hiring process or not as well uh yeah dp ke liye that's okay from scratch i think i have given the answer like start solving problems maybe do a cliche advice that i that we were given just sort the spot questions in in the sorting uh, in the users uh, number of users that have solved the problem start solving one by one and uh, if you need to look up something just google it i think that that's a good advice a resume is a good good one um resume me let me search i had what was his name i forgot i'll i'll send the uh, links to sayam after this session but yeah resume is very important you should have uh, i'll give you very brief points for resume it should not be uh, flashy like you, you are using different colors there is blue black green wo tiranga nahi banana hai apne ko we don't have to do that you just need to make it very consistent your formatting should be consistent it should be 12 12 font points um you should be using the block uh what uh, what is it called um bold you should be using the bold sparingly like very seldom wherever you just need to highlight the main thing use the bold bold there um keep your most uh recent and most um relevant accomplishments at the top so it does not mean let's say if i'm applying to a job for a software engineer and i had been employed for the last two months i was working in um in in the what should I, in which, which which department football department i don't know i'm just taking an example as a side job i'm not going to put that at the top of my resume i'll put something which is recent and which is relevant so both the things matter recent re recent and relevant uh do not fill your resume with your interests it's not a bio data uh for matrimonial so <laughs> do not put that <laughs> just a joke um uh, or else do not put your address be very thorough like go through your resume like upside down go forwards and backwards there should be no typo use grammarly or there are other apps available on the internet there should no should be no grammatical mistake or um or spelling mistake okay um be concise in what you uh, are trying to convey and use star technique star is this um uh, situation task i think action and the result uh, you can you can google it so it's something like what what was the situation what was the task what action you took and what was the result uh use that quantify whatever you have done so quantifying whatever you have done is the most important advice that i can give rather than writing did a substantial amount of refactoring of the code write something on the lines that refactored these many lines of code which resulted in uh, the bug count by the, the, the uh, this much like the, the exact numbers numbers are very important in in a resume um okay because that that actually quantifies whatever you have done uh, rather than keeping it in vague air uh, yeah that that's it for resume let me go through the questions very quickly very very quickly a lot of questions are there i'll start from the bottom and please stop now guys i won't be able to take more i would say um python is our prime language yes python any negative impact 
Python only, whereas most of the resources are using CPP or Java. Python is okay, I think. Uh, Python is okay. What did you do in your second and third year of engineering related to DSA and placement prep like OS? Yeah, OS, we did this book. Um, the Dragon book, yaar. Kya naam hai uska? I think you guys might know Dragon. And it, it depends on different colleges. Uh, Dragon book, OS, what is it called? I forgot, man. It just search Dragon book. I forgot the name of the book. Um, for DBMS, we had that Tannenbaum, I think uh, we did that. Oops, may, you can search on Oops. There is a lot of, there are a lot of resources on internet as well. And networks, we had, an, uh, I forgot the names. Like uh, GFG has a good, I think, collection of uh, to topics and articles on these. I think you, sh you can go to GFG for this. Questions asked SD roles and data scientists different at Fang when it comes to DS questions. Okay. I don't know. I haven't applied for a data scientist role. Is CPM necessary? No, not at all. Competitive programming is not necessary at all. That's what I'm saying. Um, competitive is a different beast. Uh, software engineering interview is a different beast. There are two different things. Skills needed in both, they, there is um, an overlap, but they are different things. So you don't need CP in order to be good at interviewing. Okay. Any course you would recommend? I'll, I'll send the links to Sayyam. So there is a good, there are a bunch of good courses on Coursera, uh, which you can audit and you can apply for financial aid as well. So you don't get, you don't have to pay for them if you, if your application gets approved. I'll send them. Please tell a good source to understand algorithms which becomes handy while solving wholesome problems. What is wholesome problems? I don't know. Okay, I'll go up. What are the essential steps to be in preparing for system design interviews effectively? I think you should focus on system design after getting through DSA. Uh, the DSA is the base. If you are not good in DSA, like forget about system design. So, um, Essential steps that, that link that I shared, I'll share again. Uh, I'll create a doc and share it, um, which, which you guys can get from Sayam and that will have it. Is it necessary to have proficiency in programming languages while preparing for system design interviews? Uh, if so, which programming language are recommended? System design does not require any language. System design is just pen and paper and you drawing something. Uh, it does not need any language for HLD especially. And even for LLDs, if, if the company is not asking for the hard, the code, you can actually write a pseudo code. Like th this is my class. These are the members. I'll keep them private, uh, protected, public, whatever. So you don't need any language even in that case. Uh, Python. That's okay. Let's go up, up. Introduction to machine learning with Python. Okay. Is this session recorded? I really want to attend the session, but I don't know. YouTube pe mil jayega. We are streaming there as well. Aray bhai bhai, YouTube pe record hai. Aray. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Aray, aray. Kya baat hai? How important are the connections from LinkedIn and whole circle? Do you think the supportive kind of culture should be fostered? It is very good. Like you should um, send connections to LinkedIn. And if you send to me, I think I would not be able to pay attention because I'm swamped with work. I have got 500 connections that I have not been able to accept. So I'm really sorry for that. Um, while I was at your end, I used to think why that person is not replying, why he is he has not accepted my request. Uh, what ego does he have? But now I understand people are man, Sam, Sam with work. So uh, yeah, they are important. You should, you should uh, bug as many people as you can, okay? Um, but be very, yeah, point is while you are asking for help now, you should do your homework. That's what people lack. If, if somebody has done their homework, chances are they'll get a reply. So the homework for asking for a referral is you should, um, give a, a good resume to them. You should give them the link of the post or the posts that you are, you want to apply for. You should give a specific rationale. Like, why are you a good fit for this position? Why? whatever skills that you have match the prerequisites uh, for that position, the requirements of the position. 
uh, yeah people lack everything some sometimes i just get uh hi god of please refer me in google like where to the post of sundar pichai or thomas kurian or which post should i refer to what do you want to become so that's a very weak question don't do that ever uh is dsa required for data science rules i think i'm not sure for data science driver aapke sath hi hai guys by the way youtube creators like babbar and other all is juniors are 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 kya baat hai kya baat hai are hamare ne site ka naam kya yeah so aman dhatrawal yeah he is from my college i met him i i went to get my degree and so this is a thing in our college i i still don't have my degree um because i am first of all i went twice or thrice they, they didn't have my degree now i am lazy to get it so it's it has been 5 years uh, our degree comes off used to come after 2 or 3 years because we used to come under du delhi university now nsit has become its own university so yeah aman i have his number i talk to him and say ah yeah, babbar yeah, yeah, yeah you are can you share road map for data analyst um, no idea bro Google SOC roadmap. I haven't been. Um, no idea. Really sorry. If I were to approach you for a job referral, what specific <laughs> skills or qualities would you be looking for in me? I think I answered this. Then my, if you ask me for a referral, chances are I won't be able to reply. Um, but if somebody replies specific skills and qualities, I think that you did some projects which were. open source contribution is very i think it it's it, it it will definitely stand out if you are contributing to an open source project what people generally do is they do a clo- cloning um they will create a twitter clone they will do this titanic kaggle or usko they'll put in their resume that does not count because you are what what a resume should be na resume should be showing what you have produced rather than what you have consumed just doing the titanic you have not produced something new it has not been there um doing a clone of netflix on react js whatever you have consumed from youtube you have not with multiple people and doing a pull request for uh, for the open source projects that's actually where you have contributed to the uh, open source and that is um that will reflect very highly on your resume that that's one thing that one advice i can give to everyone um because i think the thing and noise here yeah. so what people uh, the problem that people face in colleges generally is uh, they do not have anything to show i face that problem and i didn't know what to show this is this one ad- advice will work for everyone uh don't overlook dsa in doing that like take that up with ds java c++ anything that you like yeah. open source how do i start with it i have never done it i am doing it in terraform but that is not actually varsha that's not an open source for me it's like i'm doing an open source contribution because uh, i'm a developer at google and we need to support that okay so you can look up google i don't know uh, how to do it what do companies expect in dsa from data scientists no idea how many lead code questions are typically required this is also a very this does not have a good answer i think how many lead code questions are typically required to prepare for most product based companies um some people might be able to crack mm-hmm. after doing 50 questions some might not be able to do it after 200 or 300 question as well depends on how comfortable you have become solving different kinds of questions that that's what matters it's not that you have become very good in dp and you are very bad at let's say solving graph questions or um normal segmentary questions or array questions for that matter uh that's a that's a bad package you should be able to tackle different kinds of problems um yeah how to be consistent even i don't know man i still face that problem prasad till date but that is i think one i was watching arnold schwarzenegger's interview one day and somebody asked him what what one piece of advice would you give to people and shwasnagar only said one word consistency that's it so yeah is it very difficult to join apple because i have seen people joining all mnc's other than apple uh, i think they have 
a smaller uh, presence in India. That might be the reason. Because, for example, Facebook does not have any development center in India, as, as far as I know. So that might be the reason what in India. In usually, I think f- five or seven years uh, before this, before today, they only had 600 or 800 SDEs. I'm not very sure the number, but very less in uh, SDEs were there in India. So at that time, it was a dream job. It was like very difficult to join Google. But now they have expanded like humongously. It, it's it's a behemoth that the, the office that they are building, it's it's pretty large. Projects or DSA, both, as I asked, it's not an or, it's and, projects and DSA. Focus, like focus, DSA, I would say, depends, like that proportion would change. If you're not, if you're just starting out, build a good, uh, good proficiency in DSA, maybe spend 70 or 80% on DSA and 20% on projects. As you become proficient in it, you can reduce it maybe to 50 or 30 or even to 10% and focus, start focusing on projects. Could you give a ML guide also from scratch? Uh, I'll send the books. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a good source to guide you for ML. Without DSA, can we get job? Yes, which job you want, Ashwin? I don't think any soft, very, very few companies would be willing to, like, why would you want a job without DSA? Because I'm not saying uh, you need hi fi DSA. Okay. Um, but it, I don't think a, a lot of com- very few companies would be in that category. I think I interviewed for Can- Canonical once. The Canonical is a company uh, which makes Ubuntu. That was the only company I think that didn't ask DSA, as far as I remember. But the, the assignment that they give it required DSA, so you can't escape it. And if you want to escape DSA, um, I don't know. You should consider like. Why, why is it so, what part of DSA you don't like? Um, and what you like, J- just do that. Okay. And look for the companies which, which ask those types of questions and which work in that domain. Questions asked, SD rules, data scientists, different, fangman. I have no idea, bro. How can we practice DSA and where can we apply it other than solving lead code problems or CP, real life problems? Very difficult, man. Uh, I think DSA is very, Yeah, you you won't get pure DSA problems as it is every day in in your job. For example, in the last eight or nine months, I had uh, I would say four or five times I had to actually do a DSA kind of a thing in solving the problems uh, that I was facing. Other than that, that I didn't have those problems. So it the the kind of problem that a software engineer faces every day is different rather than just being DSA. It's about problem solving. I wouldn't say it's DSA, it's problem solving. Um, Yeah, so it's good. You can do it in lead code or do a CP. And if if you are bored of it in real life, you can just start doing open source contributions. That's that's good. And you can find you might find uh, avenues in that. Okay. Can you tell us about how to start learning DSA from scratch done? Two major questions. Can you give us step by step procedure of doing DSA to crack interviews? I think that's done. Also, could you give a step by step procedure to do ML like courses to start with? After that, how to get better? ML may I think that NRNG course is good enough, but NRNG also has that Stanford old course that is the main course that he has. It has, I think, 18, 20 lectures. Each lecture is one hour long where he looks proper like a nerd i think and iit madras might be having a lot of good courses i think i i don't know uh, but i expect that they will be having a lot of good courses there as well it's seven four should we stop nikhil or should i keep going uh, you can continue sir we've booked a slot till seven thirty, so uh, okay. we can keep continuing that's fine sure sure um, are there any other so i think that's can... done i'm a five star python coder first year doing DSA, what would you suggest? Um, Keep doing it. Yeah. Keep doing it. Keep getting better at it. Start taking up side projects. Um, Start taking up electives in your college, I would say. I think IIT Madras might be having good electives as well. Uh, Learn, like focus on learning rather than just DSA. 
uh, focus on honing your problem solving skills becoming better communicator like i'm uh, just a side advice uh, you can even join your debating society as well in your college so we had defsoc you can go to muns model united nations that will give you a good exposure of uh, being a fluent communicator of thinking critically because once you are making your arguments they have to be strong and persuasive enough uh, for the other person uh, first to understand it and then to actually accept it um, so those are two things that you need to get through what else yeah have fun man where to start with dp i struggle with it i think i have given can you tell us about how to start learning dsa that's done uh, yeah done okay that's done let's let's go to the bottom books on hld lld hld mein there is this books uh, data intensive applications designing data intensive applications ddia let me i'll i'll share everything so i'll type it out data, uh, data designing data intensive application that's a very good book on high level design is it done there sorry arun are you saying something yeah so what is the impact of cgpa sir on resume um, i think it's um, for some companies it matters for others it does not matter as much but while when companies come for on campus placement they um, they use it as a to to rank people who because they they have a fixed number of interviewers at their disposal they have uh, a certain amount of bandwidth in which they can only interview certain amount of people so they use it as a to stack rank people so it's it's good to have good cgpa and uh, if you have good uh, good courses like getting good cgpa is good now you you learn a lot of things so that's that's okay did you start lead code dsa in second or third year and did you follow any list or did you jump just did top problems lead code i started in third year i think um dsa i started in second year starting did you follow any list no no list as such uh i i did first i did spot problems in the ascending uh in the descending order of uh users um then i did code chef long challenges code forces contests here and there okay and uh, or did you top problems as in um so yeah I, i did problems by uh by the number of people that have solved them on spot for code forces it was contests code chef contests and then even on code chef i did sometimes by topic or uh, at other times by sorting it in the number of people that have solved the problem yeah i said i think we can close the session with the last question if we let the last students will keep going okay let me go through four five questions and pick one um that that's a good one you sleep at 7 <laughs> Works your recommend for DSA. Please take another session. Yeah, I, I'll be up if you need any help. Um, I don't see any question. I think after this, how's life at Google? अच्छा चलो, we can take that question. Okay. Uh, yeah. The first day I came, I was like, अरे, this is Jannat. This is oh, this is this is the place to be. Um, then it becomes habitual. Then you become अरे, ठीक है. चाय मिल रही है कॉफी मिल रही है इट्स ओके इट्स ओके बट इन जनरल आई वुड से इट्स इट्स अ वेरी गुड कंपनी टू वर्क फॉर सबसे पहले डू नॉट फैंटिसाइज अबाउट इट यार मतलब पीपल डू दिस थिंग रॉन्ग आई आल्सो डिड दिस थिंग रॉन्ग अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल डू दिस थिंग रॉन्ग दे दे आइडियलाइज गूगल कि गूगल इज दिस हेवन दिस इज पैराडाइज एंड एवरी अदर कंपनी इज लाइक नथिंग डोंट डू दैट there are companies which pay better than google uh, which have better opportunities than google in terms of software development so 
do not think google is some heaven it is very good it is um it is one of the top employers i would say in software industry in terms of the work life balance that you get the pay you get the opportunities you have the peer group here uh, the culture is just amazing so uh, what stands out to me about google is the people here they are super competent man um, they are very competent in what they do they are very kind and generous so you won't find people uh, backbiting or bitching about each other that's not how it works at all here they are very supportive um the food is good it's very good we have a lot of options for opportunities opportunities are infinite at google so you can learn whatever you want to they have a lot of internal resources courses um you can even get your books reimbursed whatever you buy for your job whatever course you take uh, let's say you if you are applying for a masters degree uh while doing your job the, the online masters you get two third of that reimbursed via google if you want to take let's say yoga classes which is not related to your job you can get one third reimbursed um the life is good i would say it's it's good um you get to work on exciting projects in some of the teams while not so exciting projects in others because it's it's a big org now so you need to take care of the housekeeping stuff in software engineering as well because that's that's what you are paid for do not shun it i would say uh, but it's it's part of the job uh, and you have also the freedom of taking up 20% project so it's it's something that uh, google recommends and uh, appreciates that you take up a second project and they have official posts within the internal uh, hiring process that you can work on uh, a certain project for 20% of your time um, yeah it's it's good it's good i think we have gone way over time it's 712 yeah i think i was able to answer questions i don't know how well but no yeah. absolutely sir thank you so much uh, i i really enjoyed the session i'm quite sure all of the students have done as well uh, everyone was really interactive and we're really thankful for you to share so much of your experience and so many different resources to help us go ahead with our careers as well so thank you very much for your time sir i know that you are very busy so you know taking out your time to come over and help all of us uh, into such a uh, you know with so many different uh, resources and so many different uh, so much advice is really really amazing sir so thank you so much thank you thank you for having me nikhil yeah take care guys yeah Bye. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. Uh, we will be sharing the resources that sir has shared with you via email uh, to all of the attendees as well as all of the all of the students who are watching this live stream on YouTube. So thank you all for all those amazing questions. Being very interactive, you were an amazing crowd today. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, look forward to more such events from the Student Placement Council in the future. Uh, so yeah, we'll be closing the session now. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Yes, so anyone who is waiting for the links, they will be shared uh, via email uh, after the session is done. Yeah, thank you.